let's talk about a cancel culture supporter who is now crying that she's been canceled. Professor called for peers to be fired for their speech. Now she's being fired for her speech. And she seems to think that this is unfair. Well, you got what you asked for. I have retained an attorney and am exploring my options. Well, hopefully you waste what remains of your money in a fruitless endeavor to sue the college. And that's the last we're ever going to hear from you. Laura Burnett has a history of calling for faculty to be punished for their speech and associations. Economic and political historian Phil Magnus emphasized this when I wrote about scrutiny the uh, Colin College history professor was facing for her crude twats about Vice President Mike Pence. And it just now bit her in the ass, huh? Funny. The Colin administration has now confirmed it uh, won't renew the untenured scholar's contract, which ends in May, for not conducting herself in a professional manner. Yeah, the, let me let me just kind of go on a little bit of a tangent here, because uh, there's been a lot of complaints among Comicsgate in particular that uh, with all the drama going on, it, it's starting to be like how do they say like no different than the mainstream. And I just want to I just want to remind people that every profession is pretty much like this. The difference is most of the time at least before social media existed, this was kept under wraps. Like we are we've been hearing stories about how horrible Mark Wade has been since the very beginning, like literally throwing temper tantrums. No one knew about that until fairly recently. In the good old days, back in my day, when someone was being the fool, a PR rep generally was a filter between them and the general public. So the general public never got to see exactly how fucked up most of the people they were looking up to were. But now that everyone's on Twitter, that's all changing. But even in this environment, I am glad that there are still some people that expect their employees to actually conduct themselves in a professional manner. Burnett shared images uh, from the human resources letter she received, which uh, alleged she violated delineated standards of conduct through her insubordination, making uh, pri making private personnel issues uh, public that impair the college's operations, and personal criticisms of coworkers, supervisors, and or those who merely disagree with you. She characterized the, fi the firing as retaliation for mean tweets. So he here's where we get to a little like funny, a funny game of semantics. Even if a firing is retaliation, it can still be justified. If this person is causing harm to her employer and her employer fires her for causing harm to them, that would count as a firing with cause, right? The vast majority of people worldwide would be like, well, no shit. I mean, if someone's doing a bad job, if someone is, uh, is damaging their employer, they should be fired. It just makes sense. But isn't that still technically, quote unquote, retaliation? If I just show up to work for an entire week and do nothing and uh, flaunt it in my boss's face. It's like, oh, you could take your assignments and shove them up your ass. I'm just going to sit here watching anime on company time and there's nothing you can do about it. And he fires me. Wouldn't that just be retaliation for me not uh, for me blowing work off? <laughs> That's how I view what happened here. This may be retaliation you know, by the textbook definition but still very much justified. Toxic people like this should be fired. What was it your boy Zach calls them? HR ticking time bombs? Now, the best way to deal with HR ticking time bombs is to never hire them in the first place. Social media is a blessing for that. Yeah, social media is a curse if you weren't expecting it. And then suddenly you find out all of your employees are making fools of themselves on social media and uh, dragging your company's reputation through the mud. That's a curse. But it can also be a blessing. If you have a resume 
go by your desk and you look up who this person is and you just see them acting a fool on social media all day, every day. Well, there we go. Looks like this person's not going to be uh, not going to be getting hired here. If you want an employee and not an activist, social media is a godsend for that. Because these people have been conditioned since birth almost to never hold anything back. Always speak your mind because you're on the right side of history. So they they say all their ignorant, racist, sexist shit all over the internet because they think everyone's on uh, on their side. In the long run, though, it's those of us who are always forced to stay silent. We're the ones that benefit because when our personal social media accounts are searched by potential employers, they see regular fucking people. We're going to win this in the long run. All right, so this is one of the, the, the uh, twats in question. Breaking hired news after deleting his entire Twitter account, which he was obliged to preserve for legal purposes. Colin College President H. Neil Matkin has decided to not renew my contract for mean tweets. This is how you get your job back, isn't it? You just keep insulting your boss and keep picking a fight. This right here is actually why um, I mean, a lot of times when someone gets fired and leaves a job on very bad terms, th there's always people asking like, well, isn't this person going to sue to get their job back? It's not worth getting a job back if you're just going to be hostile with everyone there. So the Chronicle of Higher Indoctrination calls Burnett perhaps President Neil Matkin's most outspoken critic. The college also recently let go of uh, two professors who organized its chapter of the union-like Texas Faculty Association, one of whom uh, started a public letter against its uh, coronavirus reopening plan. Burnett twatted uh, Thursday night that she was disappointed but not surprised at being let go for her free speech, accusing the college of lacking transparency. I have retained an attorney and am exploring my options. Yeah, she used the incident to repeat her view that her firing was not cancel culture because there's no such thing. All right, at least she's consistent. So here's what she posted there. While you're here, no, this isn't cancel culture. There's no such thing. This is government retaliation for free speech, which is illegal and actionable. <laughs> nope. Nope. This is, uh, how, how would you call it? What would you say? Consequence culture. Enjoy reaping what you've sown. Yeah, social norms are a never-ending contest. Well, enjoy being on the wrong side of history. The likely non-renewal of Burnett's contract, previewed by a critical Texas lawmaker who previously asked Matkin how he planned to handle Burnett, was deeply ironic given her attempts to cancel several economics faculty at taxpayer-funded George Mason University in current year minus three. Magnus, the historian critical of Burnett, said last week, she demanded they be sanctioned, stripped of tenure, and possibly fired for no other reason than accepting grant money from the Koch Foundation. The Kochs have been paid to counterfeit academic legitimacy, Burnett wrote uh, in a uh, since-removed blog post, according to Magnus. Yeah, she probably had to remove them for legal reasons as well. Probably got a C and D. Yeah, so here, here are the twats from Phil Magnus. Let's go through them. This is a deeply ironic story. In current year minus three, Burnett publicly demanded that several econ faculty at GMU be stripped of tenure, sanctioned, and possibly fired for no other reason than they had received grant money from the Koch Foundation. Free speech for me, but not for thee. Yeah, notice that uh, when they get you fired, it's consequence culture. But when you get them fired, it's illegal retaliation or something. Oh, God, I look forward to more of these fuckers just, just getting eaten by their own. So Burnett is also the editor of Society for U.S. Intellectual History's blog, which includes the statement on cyberbullying. Again, no small irony, but Burnett himself is a serial violator of the same policy. Oh, my God. Let, let's just read this first. 
So uh, you S or oh, Su Susi, <laughs> let's just pronounce it. Susi affirms its commitment to ensuring a respectful, supportive, and inclusive environment that fosters scholarly exchange and promotes the building of professional networks at our conferences, sponsored events, and across various media platforms. We seek to provide a conference environment which attendees can participate regardless of age, color. Citizenship status, national origin, gender, gender identity, and expression, sexual orientation, disability, blah, 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 whatever. Yeah, we do not tolerate harassment. And yet you always tolerate these guys harassing us. Yeah, when they do it to us, it's just consequences for us being garbage people. But then when these garbage people end up suffering the consequences of their actions, now it's targeted harassment. I was complaining about that uh, with regards to Twitter earlier as well, actually. I actually had a guy telling me, like, oh, if I was you, I would have put this person on full blast. And I had to respond, like, dude, I'd love to put this person on blast, but I'd be suspended if I did that. So these people can quote tweet you and tag in a bunch of, like, million follower accounts and uh, and then just say twitter do your thing nothing happens to them if i do the same thing to them i'm suspended for targeted harassment this is another reason i keep saying we need to just stop interacting with these people completely don't talk to them don't read their shit don't let them read your shit just Break away from them completely. There's two reasons behind this. The first reason is you can't have a discussion with these people because they're, they're all they're trying to do is get a soundbite from you that they can get you banned for. And secondly, if you cut them out of your life, if you stop interacting with them, if you stop giving them any ammo, guess what? They'll turn on each other. We're already seeing this. We've seen this countless times in the past, and instances of, uh, of these snakes eating their own has only been increasing. If you segregate yourself away from them, they will have to hunt their own to keep getting their kicks. These professional victims will have to find someone among their own ranks that they can uh, that they can lynch as the victimizer. They won't be able to go for you anymore. We just need to remove ourselves from the that fucking cesspool and watch as it cleans itself up. That's my plan when dealing with them. More from Burnett's uh, current year minus three crusade to sanction faculty at GMU, including demanding the retraction of their academic work. She's been scrubbing this history off her blog, so screen capping for posterity. Oh, oh, no, dude, screen capping's not not enough. Archive it. No, some thoughts on the garbage fire of the Coke uh, shekels at GMU, including a special uh, word for the uh, Cokelings who brought their stick to the uh, the you, you see uh, thre comment threats. In their published scholarship, did these Coke-funded hacks disclose they were paid specifically to reach certain conclusions? Oh, are you almost going to reach some uh, level of self-awareness and realize that's exactly what you are? <laughs> Will journalists retract their articles? Coke uh, fund a counterfeiting ring producing fake scholarship buying reputation? Well, enjoy that consequence culture that you didn't have a problem with until it came for you. I will not be lifting a finger to help these people. Again, some of them might be redeemable, and that's a big might, but none of them can be saved until they suffer through their own bullshit and clean up their own mess first. Don't help them clean up their mess. Force them to clean it up themselves and then if you think that they're worth interacting with, then you can start opening up a dialogue. But not until after they clean up their own mess.
Oh man, I am so excited to tell you guys right now that finally, after about a year of build-up and shilling, we have launched Blade Devil on Indiegogo, and so far it is doing so well thanks to awesome people like you. If you haven't backed it yet, then please check the links in the description and check out Blade Devil on Indiegogo. You will not be disappointed. Looking forward to seeing you there.